Welcome back to The Chris David Show. If you're watching or listening, then you already know who I am. But if you don't, I'm Chris David. I know it's been a minute, but I hope you're all safe and well. I hope you enjoyed your summer, and I hope you're as ready as I am for season two of The Chris David Show. Now, I know you're wondering, why is the show out on a Saturday? Well, in honor of today being 11-11 and this being our second season, we want to do something special. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's hit that intro. We are not different. We are just individuals who want to be accepted for who we are and not looked at as through the lens of our disability. It is the, It does not define who we are. Currently, one in four people suffer from a disability, and that number represents nearly one billion people globally. In America, this number represents 64 million people. This means that all of us know someone living with a disability or may be living with a disability ourselves. The mission of Ms. Wheelchair America is to provide an opportunity of achievement for women who use wheelchairs to successfully educate and advocate for the 64 million plus Americans living with disabilities. Ms. Wheelchair America is not a beauty pageant. It is a competition based on advocacy, achievement, communication, and presentation to select the most accomplished and articulate spokeswoman for persons with disabilities. On September 2nd, 2023, our next guest made history when she became the first Black woman to win the title of Ms. Wheelchair America. Returning to the Chris David Show, please welcome back Ms. Wheelchair America 2024, Ms. Chandra Smith. Welcome back, Chandra. Thank you for having me back. It's so good to see you again. And, and listen, we have so much to talk about, but thank you for coming back on the Chris Davis Show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Now let's get right to it. How does it feel to be Ms. Wheelchair America 2024? Wow. You know how they say um, with the crown comes great responsibility. It sounds cliche, but it is so true. Um, you are actually signing up for a job. And with that job, you have many roles that you have to to fulfill, but you're also a role model. And it is something to, it's quite humbling to be in that role. Absolutely. And, and listen, before we go any further, Chandra, I'd be remiss if I didn't formally congratulate you on winning the title of Ms. Wheelchair America 2024. You. And yours has been an amazing journey to watch. I mean, there are little Black girls right now who are disabled who now have a hero and a role model. But, but listen, I'm not gonna do to you what you did to me on the last show. So I'm gonna save, we're gonna save the tears for now. <laughs> but yes. we're gonna save the tears for now. But I have, look, I'm prepared for you because I knew, I know, I, I knew. Thank you. <laughs> but um, tell us about your journey back to, uh, out to uh, Michigan back in August. How did everything go with that? Well, um, the journey was, I guess, again, it, it, it can be stressful because if you're not used to fundraising and also you're not used to traveling with a disability, these are all um, new things that I had to learn how to do. So to raise the money to actually get to nationals and and so forth, um, and to actually travel with a disability and to just know that there's a risk. There's a, a risk to your wheelchair um, and things of that nature. So it's always something because you have to transfer out of your wheelchair. I'll be happy when airplanes, you know, implement universal design and you can actually 
stay seated in your wheelchair. Hmm. You know what, Chandra, we're going to get to that a little later because I, I have some questions I, I wanted to ask you about your experience, you know, flying and with TSA and everything. But I want to know this, though. Did you know you were going to win? No, I had no idea that I was going to win. Um, I competed with some very accomplished women. Um, all of these women have amazing stories and they come from, I think that we probably had the most diverse class, um, not only um, in terms of different races, but different backgrounds. Um, some of us acquired a disability later in life. Some of us were born with a disability. Some of us um, were mothers. Some of us were single. Um, some of us were had different, um, I guess, if you will, I guess you call it a sexual orientation. So that it was just very diverse. Now, I'll tell you something. You manifested this on our last show, on our last episode, earlier this year, back in March. And I'm going to play the clip. Listen, I want you to come back as soon as you win the crown. Because you're going to win. I just, we have to manifest, we have to claim it. What does it feel like for you being the first Black woman to win the title of Ms. Wheelchair America? It was, it was, it was shocking. Um, not because of, I guess, being the first, because that should just not be. Um, there's so many talented women. So it just goes to show you that there is systematic racism that still persists, even in the pageant world. Um, because you really want to get a cohort of women that resemble the United States. And when you look at it, you're looking at diversity across the board with your judges. You're looking at diversity across the board when you're looking at the board of the organization. And you're looking at um, recruitment strategies. You're looking at um, who is making these decisions because that most certainly should not be the case. So it was, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a concern. I really enjoyed your speech. Um, and you hit on something that I talk about daily at my nine to five. And I'm glad that you said what you just said, because this is something that affects everyone, regardless of your race, your age, your socioeconomic status, your ability. And the clip I'm going to play is where you're talking about the digital divide. Imagine the frustration and isolation of struggling to access all online content. You constantly face a locked door that denies you access to information, education, opportunities, and social interactions. This is the reality for more than 54 million Americans living with a disability. You see, digital accessibility is not just convenient, it's a matter of human rights. And you would be shocked to know that 98% of the US-based websites are inaccessible to the disability community. We must take action. We cannot allow this digital divide to persist. I want you to talk to us about the digital divide. When you really look at what I mean by the digital divide is that you have a group of people that simply cannot access electronic data. And when you really take, for example, emergency preparation, and the information that you need, you really need this. There's going to be some sort of flood happening. And as an individual with a disability, whatever disability it may be, you won't be able to access that information if the site is not accessible. So when we really look at it, we're really looking at how much technology has 
improve and how we rely so heavily on technology. And then you just have this group of people that are just isolated. And that is the group of people that I represent. And that is more than 75 million Americans with a disability. You know, in many urban, and you know, I got to get out of saying urban. I'll just say black. In a lot of black areas, yeah. ISPs have been accused of throttling internet service, meaning that the Wi-Fi speeds are much slower there than they are in the more affluent, or the, I'll just say it again, the white areas. And this also contributes to the digital divide, you know, as our children rely on the internet to do their homework and, and now they're lacking the equity. What should be done about this? Yes, um, we definitely need to, for one, acknowledge that this is an issue. And we need resources and resources come with money. <laughs> so um, that that is just the, the bottom line. We really need to, to really, really look towards putting our resources to education and awareness and closing that, that digital divide. Absolutely. And you know, we spoke previously um, on our show before about ex accessibility benefiting all of us. And I'll, you know, I'll share an example, like right now that I'm using um, the keyboard, I'm on a laptop. So the keyboard is like far, far away from me right now. Um, so I have this thing called the keyboard viewer on my MacBook. And if I need to type something or look something up, I'm just using my mouse to tap, you know, each key because there's a little miniature keyboard that pops up. And the other thing is um, my bank now um, has speech prompts to help us do mobile deposits. And I think both of those features are really cool. What do you what do you think about that? Um, I, I think that that is, that is looking towards universal design and what I talk about where you are including everyone, right? So that regardless of your ability, you still have access to the information that you need. And I mean, 64 million Americans. I mean, Chandra, that's like a fifth of the population. That's like and those are the ones that 20%. actually know that they have a disability because there is some in, you know, invisible disabilities that you yes. don't see. I have a yes. very visible disability, so right. you can see it. But then there's others that choose not to disclose for a numerous reasons um, and they may be struggling but if we just design for the eight and the 80 year old we will get everybody in between so it wouldn't matter if you disclose because universal it would just accessibility would just be it would just be it would just be that is just our state that is the galaxy that i'm hoping for that it just exists and i mean when you think about those numbers, that's, think just to give people like a visual example, I'm a visual learner, I need to see stuff. That's a little less than, or maybe because there, there are invisible people involved too who, who do not disclose. That number of people, that's like California and Texas combined, like the population. Yeah. And I mean, that. It's that's just that's a lot of people. But but now going back to your speech, because I again, I'm going to keep bringing this speech up because I really liked it. Um, you said, um, and I quote. I sit here before you today to ask you to fight with me for the country our ancestors fought for. Fight with me for the country we'd hope for and fight with me for the country our children deserve. Chandra, are you thinking of running for political office? <clears throat> oh my goodness. I literally have been thinking about it. I literally have been thinking about it. I don't know um, if that is my calling, but um, I, I, I definitely have been thinking about it. I guess you read my mind. I, I definitely do. I do believe I need to have a seat at the table to really make the changes that I want to see, um, the future that I envision. I mean, honestly, I'd love 
to see a disabled person in office who is truly passionate about helping their constituents. Because there's some people who are disabled. I'm not going to mention, well, actually, I said the state earlier, but anyway. Um, but but you'd get my vote. <clears throat> Ms. Wheelchair uh, America you. 2024, you'd get my vote. And you know, also, I want to shout out Governor Patterson. He was the, the governor years ago in New York. Um, but now in, in our previous video, <clears throat> excuse me, I called on your governor, Mr. Westmore, to make Maryland more accessible. And shout out to him. He watches. And, and I want to say that because congratulations to you for recently being appointed as a member of the Maryland Commission on Disabilities. Yes. Tell us all about that. Yes, um, the secretary for secretary for disabilities reached out to me, and she's like, "We have this opening, and I think you should apply." And I put my name in the hat because I do believe in the mission, um, and I was selected. <laughs> to make a long story short, yeah. We listen, Chandra. You you seen my show? You know I'm dropping, playing all kinds of sound effects in the background for you. So that I'm I'm just I'm just so happy for you, and I'm so excited because I haven't seen you in so long. Um, Chandra and I actually met, guys, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, that was I was so yeah. shocked. I was like, whoa. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We definitely will. Um, but you know, we spoke up also about visibility and representation. And I'm happy not only to see you in these positions, but I'm happy that I'm seeing more characters with disabilities being featured on, on TV and in film. I mean, even in, in like cartoons and anime. In fact, um, <clears throat> the characters themselves are being played by actors with disabilities. And now there's a show um, I watch on Hulu and it's called Only Murders in the Building. And it features a deaf character. And it, in fact, on like the first season of the show, um, I want to say it's episode seven, I believe. Um, it gives us the perspective of what that character, um, of that character's experience, um, as there's, no, there's very little dialogue. What do you think about that? I think that that representation is so important and we need to rewrite the story the story of overcoming deficiencies. Um, I, we need to see a story that really, really focuses on unlocking and celebrating human potential. That is people focus so much on what individuals can't do versus what they can. And how do we support that? Do you binge watch any shows, Chandra? The Walking Dead. Oh, man. you know, it's yeah. been so long since I've watched that. Like, I have to, like, catch up because they're on, like, what is it, like, season eight now? Um, They are on 10. 10. Yeah, season 10. Yeah. Yeah. What other shows do you, are you, are you watching? Do you watch? Um, let's see. What do I watch? Wednesday, I was getting into that. Um. And um, what other things do I watch? Let's see. I don't really watch much TV. Mm -hmm. I'm mostly watching YouTube. Like, you know, <laughs> like I'm like so interested. Um, and I watch a lot of documentaries and, you know, things that just talk about the human experience and whatever that is, whatever that looks like. Nice. Um, and Chandra watches our show guys too. So I know, do. She's, I a, do. she's a fan. She watches and um, this year, Chandra, because I was told by someone this season, rather, I was told that I have a cussing mouth. I actually have a cuss bang. <laughs> so whenever oh, I curse really? on the show, down, <laughs> down here on the bottom, whenever I curse, there's going to be like little thing that comes up saying how much money that, um, you know, correlates with. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to try to watch my mouth, but also um, I'm going to donate whatever the, the tally is at the end of the season. I'm going to donate to charity. So yeah. maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I'll watch my mouth. Maybe I won't. I don't know. 
But, you know, I've been watching um, the show on Hulu and it's called um, Black King. It's a really good show, um, shot beautifully. I won't give away too much to everybody out there, but it's about a woman from Jamaica. Um, she passes away and she hid a lot of her past from her children. Um, and hopefully it gets a season two now that the strike is over. Um, but you'll have to check that show out, um, Chandra, on, on Hulu. Um, it's called Black King. I want to know what going through TSA was like, because we spoke about it earlier. Um, I've had several people, you know, who are disabled tell me that they've, you know, experienced issues. Ever since I started traveling, because with this role, there's a lot of traveling that's evolved. Um, every airport is different. Um, just some just go, I feel like they do a little too much. Because um, when I was in Texas, I was basically told to take off my jacket, take off my boot, um, things that I wasn't told before in any other, you know, uh, any other place and to practically, you know, like stand up if I, if I could, but some people can't even stand up, you know, even um, amongst individuals with disabilities, there's privilege. Like I have a voice privilege and I can use my voice. Um, you know, some people have hand privileges that I don't have and, and so forth. So to sell somebody to stand up basically is a lot um, because you don't know if that person can or cannot. So I just feel that there is just um, some things that, that happen when you go through through certain airports. And it just depends on, you know, the, the situation and the person you run into. Um, was that at uh, in Dallas? Was it DFW? Um, it was a Austin airport. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Um, one thing I, I'll recommend to you, I don't know if you already have it, um, is pre-check. Do you have pre-check? Yes, I do have pre-check. Okay, they awesome. Still, yeah, they still did all that extra stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that that's insane. Um, wow. Yeah, it's like, what's the the whole point in even doing that if they're still gonna, you know? Yes, and then they like, well, even though they they tell you to take off your jacket, do all this stuff, they still have the chemical test, everything, the wheelchair, everything like that, your hands and like the boot I was wearing and all of that, so. How are things going with um, accessibility starts with us? Um, things are going great. Um, I'm getting a lot of media coverage, if you will. Um, I am actually doing a lot of speaking engagements. Um, I, like I was telling you, just being in these rooms to be able to network and, and make things happen, so to speak. So Chandra and I met everyone back in May. Um, if you follow me on IG, I posted the picture, I have some stories up, but we met at an event called uh, Adaptive Maryland Day, and that was at uh, Promise Landing Farm in uh, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Um, we're showing the photos now if you're watching on YouTube. Um, but I really enjoyed myself um, at that event. It was nice to see everyone having a good time. I love that you all have a community. And it was just overall a great vibe. I don't think I've experienced that much where I live. But um, definitely, if they have another one, I'll be back. And hopefully, they do have another one in, in yeah. 2024. Hopefully that was their do. first one, but yes. hopefully they do it again. And hopefully they invite you and they have you speak. I mean, now that you are our queen, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. come on, do it, do it. Um, and by the way, Chandra is beautiful right here on my video, but Chandra is just absolutely gorgeous in person. Oh, you're too kind. And so is her sister Shaquandra. Did you, but did you know it was me when, when you saw me, when I ran up on you like that? Did you know? I knew you said you might come to an event, but I was just mm -hmm. like, he's just talking. He's not going to show up. 
<laughs> no, listen, <laughs> if I, I say I'm going to do something, shot. I'm going to do it. So, I was like, oh, wow, okay. And the beard is real in person. <laughs> You it's see, actually, I cut some of it it's off. It's actually like, real. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. I, but it, it's grown this way, but I cut all of that off. It was starting to, like, yes. really irritate me. I mean, I guess I proved my point that I could do No Shave November for, like, five years. So, I mean, but even without the beard, I mean, you know, people recognize me because I don't really look like anyone. I mean, yes. like, I've gotten told that, I look like Malcolm Jamal Warner. Like people say that, that that could be like my older brother or my dad or someone. Right. And then when I was thin, I used to get Lenny Kravitz a lot, but also I didn't have um, um, dreadlocks. I had like a big Afro. Um, but do you ever get told that you look like anyone, Chandra? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, you look like a winner. Okay. Thank you. Thank this you. Is I our accept friend. that. All right. This everybody. This is our friend, Ms. Wheelchair America, 2024, Chandra Smith. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to say before we go? Um. Just a thank you for having me on your show, and we need allies. Right. So we can't do this alone. Advocacy is like construction. We have to keep building. But Rome wasn't built in a day. But we need able to body allies. We need everybody to create a future where everything is accessible, including the digital world. Absolutely. And I have to say this. I'm so happy for you that you got something that you really wanted. And you are living proof that of that of, of prayer and of perseverance and i know that your mother is looking down and guiding your path in the light and the right in the way and i know that your family is proud of you as am i as are we here at the chris david show so congratulations again chandra ms wheelchair america 2024 now before we go I have to do some shout outs. So I want to shout out to Promise Landing Farm in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and everyone who put together Adaptive Maryland Day. Shout out to all the lovely people I met there. Shaquandra, uh, Monica, the lady who was riding the horse. I can't remember your name. I'm sorry. But shout out to the precious little girl who's in that photo with, Ch with Chandra. And all of the people, all of the families supporting people living with disabilities. Now also, I have to shout out to Autumn Rain Johnson, who was Ms. Wheelchair, Rhode Island. I have to shout out to Ms. Wheelchair, Pennsylvania, Dominique Howell, who's from Philly, 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 where I am from. I have to shout out to uh, Ms. Wheelchair, New York, Kay uh, Kalia Hazlett, who's from Brooklyn. Uh, Ms. Julie Chambers, who is Ms. Wheelchair, New Jersey. She's from my old stomping grounds of Jersey City. Also, um, Ms. Wheelchair Mar um, um, Maryland, who's right with here with us. I didn't mean to say Maryland. I meant to say Michigan. Um, Ms. Wheelchair Michigan, uh, Jamie Jr. She's from the D. Uh, Ms. Ca Ms. Uh, Wheelchair California, Candace Welsh. And Ms. Wheelchair Arizona, um, Kimberly uh, Warmack. And all of the participants of Ms. Wheelchair America 2024. Um, last but not least, I have to shout out the Mary Free, Mary, let me get this right, Mary Free Bed Guild and all of the organizers and sponsors as well as the board at Ms. Wheelchair America. Um, I need to shout out Jay Johnson, Laurel TV, WTOP News Washington, Channel 11, NBC WBAL Baltimore, um, Fox 17, WXMI in Grand Rapids, and all of the media outlets that have covered Chandra. And shout out to everyone who left beautiful comments and words of encouragement for Chandra and who donated and helped Chandra raise over $4,000. Yes, See? indeed. Yes. Our girl won. She won. And everyone, this is Chandra Smith. Ms. Wheelchair America 2024. I can't say that enough. Like, I can't say it enough. I, I yeah. just, 
and you won, but it, but it's like I feel like I won something too. Uh, you know, so and I think that's how it should be. You should feel that way for people when when they do well and they do something good. Um, but Chandra, how can everyone get in touch with you if they want to get in touch with you? Yes, um, you can follow me on Instagram at Chandra Chronicles, one word, and you can follow me on Facebook at Miss Wheelchair America 2024. And you can also follow my personal Facebook, which is Chandra Smith, nothing special. All right. And I'm going to put all of that will be up in the video. Um, so here's the thing. Last time you were on, I asked you a question that I ask all my guests here at the Chris David show. And it was, if you had a time machine, what would you go back and tell yourself? But since this is your second time back, I wanted to ask you if there's something you haven't done yet that you'd like to do in the future. Something I haven't done yet that I would like to do in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be to be a mother. I believe that I have so much love to give and just, just my little piece in the world, your legacy. When you, when we pass away, you always think to yourself, what do you want to leave behind? And when you come home from a long day of work and you open that door, what's on the other side? And um, that's what I see myself. I see myself a wife. I see myself a mother. Um, and that's what I see for my future. Chandra, thank you again for stopping by. And listen, if you happen to see Chandra on a dating app or anything like that, <laughs> act like you have some sense, okay? <laughs> You don't want the Chris David Show cavalcade of scars coming for you. Did you remember Lou Raw had the cavalcade of scars? So I have a cavalcade of scars. All right. They're going to scar them up. They mess with anybody. Anyway, <laughs> give it up again for our Miss Wheelchair, America 2024, Miss Chandra Smith. And give it up for all of you out there for listening and watching. Thanks for finding your way back to the Chris David Show. I mean, I know there are a lot of guys out there with shows, and that's nice, but you only get one Chris David. But before I forget, um, I want to give a special shout out to Ms. Amber Reese at Goddess Has Spoken TV. Amber is a young woman with uh, left hemiplegic uh, spastic cerebral, cerebral palsy, and she has a podcast slash YouTube show. So check Amber out. And also to uh, Soundview Community Media, Thank you for giving people with disabilities a voice. Now, tell your friends, tell your mama, tell your daddy, tell your baby daddy, tell your boyfriend, tell your sister, tell your cat, tell your dog, tell your doctor. Tell everyone who wants to close the digital divide. To follow us on Instagram at Chris David TV and to follow our show at The Chris David Show on Instagram and YouTube. You can also visit ChrisDavidShow.com. There you'll find everything you need to know about the show. Thank you for watching and listening. I am your host, Chris David. And this is The Chris David Show. Be kind and be well. I am truly speechless and that never happens. I mean, you guys are trying to give me another heart attack. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve you all. I'm incredibly honored. Uh, and again, I am truly speechless, but I'm truly inspired by the ladies who sit behind me. And this crown represents the resilience, determination, and the spirit of the ladies that stand behind me and my team. And I share this crown with them. What I wanna say is just two years ago, I was given a 1% chance of survival, but I decided to fight. And I will continue to fight as Miss Wheelchair America 
for each and every single person with a disability. I will not stop fighting until every single thing is accessible to every single person with a disability. Thank you. And to all of the kings and queens watching, remember to carry yourself like royalty. You are capable, you are powerful, and we see you. This is Chandra Smith, Ms. Wheelchair America 2024, and this is the Chris David Show.